the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Schweiger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, title of our hearing, economic toll. Um, and I'm trying to get my head around because I have an interesting interest on, I keep you know sitting here looking at the charts and data, even the doctor actually said something that was sort of fascinating, sort of the different categories he ends up dealing with. Um, and, and I'm gonna first do some charts um, Ms. Swear, I'm going to actually ask some couple questions of you, but my goal here is not to figure out how many dead animals, though, that's actually, being from Scottsdale, that's actually, for us, a little creepy. Um, but, but we have a lot, but we have a dozen indoor shooting ranges in my district, and some of them cost a fortune to become a member of them. But I'm looking at the suicide data on the sheets broken out by states, um, and let me do this, let, j just so I can sort of get my head, I'm one of those people that almost needs a prop. And I got a compliment, um, I believe much of this data is coming from every town, and it's been quite useful, or use, easy to use. Our total, su our, our total firearm, bad acts, suicides, homicides, and then we've been trying to set up an access here on restrictions in those states. Okay, a, a good chart, good data. But then when we actually started to try to normalize saying suicides, particularly if I will normalize for functionally five southern states that actually have some very unusual um, you know, data on their, um, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, if I normalize for suicides and I pull the suicides out and then I come back and normalize for what I'm seeing, and I know I'm going a little geeky, but if I were to pull those five southern states out, my homicide rates are actually, the distributionally, um, pretty, pretty random out there. I mean, it's not like I'm seeing that the access of here states with firearm restrictions, and I'm then seeing a skewing saying those states have dramatically less bad acts other than suicide. It, it's just, it's not in the data. And that lets us sort of understand, we got, in some ways, maybe a bigger problem than we understand. You know, how do you, how do you basically, if our goal here is a safer society, more prosperous society, less economic damage, am I looking at a world where I need to completely rethink our debate on firearms and firearm violence? Is it, maybe we go back to the 1950s and we're having training in school. States like Arizona, um, 25 plus years ago, we legalized concealed carry, but we asked you to go through training. And there were predictions we would see substantially more bad acts, and that didn't happen in the data. Um, Illinois, Florida, dramatically different restriction rules, both complex populations, substantially different you know, numbers in some of the bad acts with firearms. Um, what could we do as a society to deal with the suicide numbers that just, if you look at these suicide numbers, they rip your heart out. Um, I have an academic article, which is, is somewhat above my head, but I've been trying to read it, that's talking about and trying to analyze these young men who've been involved in mass shootings and how many of them have been displaying suicidal tendencies. Or, or um, I, I'm just, uh, Ms. Swear, what am I thinking wrong? If, if this were, we were having a truly honest debate and we were whiteboarding this and saying we, our intention is to make society safer, what would we be breaking out? What would we be looking at? Uh, I'm sorry, can you, I'm not uh, sure it, I understand it, the am, question. Am I wrong to be thinking that suicide prevention is where a bunch of capital goes? Training on, on knowing that how to use your firearm, how to keep it safe that you don't grab a firearm and start cleaning it until you've gone through the proper procedures. I mean, those of us that grew up with this, we have rules. And how many young people are out there running around with a firearm that have no blanking idea how it works? I mean, if I were to come and say, here's a dozen things, what makes society, what are you seeing out there in literature that would make us safer? Yeah, um, I, I think I understand the, the question a, a little bit 
better. Uh, I, I'm going to pull off of some of the things you've, you've already mentioned. Um, so you talked about mass shootings in particular and, and suicide prevention. I, I think you're correct. To, to a large extent, uh, mass shooters are suicidal. Um, and they're showing signs of being a danger to themselves or others. Uh, while mass shootings are considerably a small part of the problem, they have an, an outsized effect on both the sort of the national conversation and the way we feel about public safety. Um, so it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, what that tells us for prevention is that a lot of these individuals are showing signs of being a danger to themselves or others, that there are methods for targeted intervention or even just generalized uh, suicide prevention that are more likely to lower those rates and to allow for intervention you know, other than just broad gun, gun control measures. And, and I, look, I know I spoke too long, and thank you for your patience, Mr. Chairman, but there's also some fascinating discussion here on both the homicide rates, but also if we could understand why does a state like Massachusetts have such a tr amazing number on low number on suicides, but also some other states that actually have very open firearm laws also have terrific? It turns out there's complexity here, and if we're going to be intellectually honest, we need to bathe into that complexity. Yield back. Thank you, Mr. Striker, very much. Let me introduce the, the, the winner of yesterday's primary in Maryland, the distinguished medal. Yay. Gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Drones. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and 